<laughs> Aloha. Aloha. Welcome to Feel Good Doha, right. where we have meaningful conversations around health, leadership, and personal growth. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, it's an honor to be here, always. Um, there we have. I'm excited for the rest of this series and to watch what we're going to be sharing with us. Mm -hmm. The beautiful and powerful Juju Alfardan. Yeah, that makes me sound so like... <laughs> <laughs> I just saw myself flying over Doha, like in my head, <laughs> when you said that. <laughs> well, uh, I'm sure you're not the only one who has that impression of you. Oh, so. um, I'm humbled by that. Like, mm -hmm. honestly, it makes me... <laughs> Juju, so thank you for being here. Welcome to this space. Thank you so and much. Really appreciate it. My first question to you is, how do you feel good on a daily mm. basis? So, I do believe in the power of routines. Mm. And um, rituals, for sure. Yep. Um, but I also, through this whole uh, season, and I don't want to even say it's, it's word anymore, so I just want to say the season that we just passed through, um, have learned about like the beauty of not having routine at all, mm -hmm. you know, and just allowing space for play and allowing space mm. for life to just move through us, you know, just whatever... Uh, come, because every day is a little bit different, right? And what we learned in this time is that we don't know anything and pre-planning and pre-scheduling is really just a waste of time. Mm -hmm. you know, so I guess it's taking me deeper into, and I think the answer to that question is being completely present in the moment. Mm -hmm. And that's what really helps me, makes me feel good. Um, mm -hmm. I am, um, I realized in this time that I'm definitely a people pleaser. And I'm a, to an extent, a yes woman, where I say yes to so many things and then I end up like being overbooked, um, mm -hmm. over scheduled and mm -hmm. not leaving any room for diversion. And it's in the diversion that there's so much joy yeah. You know, and it's in that mm -hmm. out of nowhere experience that there's miracles and magic, mm. right? So, um, how do I feel good every day? It's allowing, giving myself space mm. to allow life to move through me, mm -hmm. you know, to move with life rather than to be like constantly steering the way. Mm. Um, because that's boring. I don't want to know what I'm going to be up to actually. Mm. You know, I'm, I'm so much more enjoying the element of complete unknowing and complete surrender and complete faith. So that's what it is. And then um, depending on how I feel, I offer myself what it is that I need. So whatever ritual then I'll call upon. So it can be cacao. Mm. Um, I'm also, I've also been experimenting with, you know, cacao in different forms, not only drinking it, Mm -hmm. um, but you know, freezing it in bars and in all these different mm. types of ways, which is just yeah, uh, um, amazing. I have to share some with you. Uh, you're gonna absolutely love it. Different spices. Mm -hmm. um, sometimes it's with sound. You know, um, I recently picked up the hand pan, mm -hmm. um, some harmonic drums, some beautiful crystal singing bowls, and every day it's something else. Yeah. Um, spending time in the sun and the sea, you know, but again, it's, it's intuitively so, cause there's some days that I really don't want to be hot, you know, and some days that warmth is like a hug from the divine. Yeah. So it's just allowing space. I, I think for a while we've been, I think 
and I, we, I've read this, and I'm sure you all have, that we associated being busy with being like, I don't know, validated or something. Mm-hmm. And um, even in, a, in, in my case, a person who you have meant, referred to in the beginning as the powerful, you know, there's times that I felt unvalidated and felt like, yeah. what am I? Who am I? I'm really nothing. Like, what am I doing in my life? All these questions mm-hmm. have come up several times and they probably will come up again. Yeah. You know, that I've never done anything. I accomplished nothing. All these stories <laughs> um, do come up. Yeah. Um, and it's just coming back to the, the truth that A, what we do is not who we are. You know, uh, no, our profession. Not who we are. Yeah. Yeah. It's really not. It's really, really not. I think that um, it's a part of who we are, sure. Mm. You know, but is it our be all and end all essence? No, that is mm. what that is is, is, is our your beings. We're human beings, we're energetic beings, we're beings. That's it. And it's so beautiful. And we overcomplicated it for so long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it lands so good. I know that's a super like long answer, but I like I, I sometimes ramble on. You can stop me in the morning and be like, yo, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. That lands so good with me right now because Interestingly enough, I've been more productive over the last three months than I would say ever before in my life. I've been doing a lot of doing. And I found myself getting anxious with the, with the being and the allowing in the moments during my day when, I, when I'm just surrendering. And noticing that feeling that you mentioned of how I've attached my sense of self-worth perhaps to you know what I'm doing and what I'm accomplishing. So thank you for reminding me about the importance of um, making space. Yeah. No, thank you for sharing that you relate to that because I think that we all do you know we're mm. also we're pretty hard on ourselves I think for so long over accomplishment was like the the judge of how great we are how worthy we are mm. and honestly I, I if I could s- strip that away from everyone if there's one thing i could do to the world is strip that mm. that away from everyone because it mm. created a, another dynamic in the way we interact and um it creates judgment and discrimination and mm. it, it just all come back to, to an essence and i feel like there's so much more love in the world because we're all the same mm. You know? Mm. Yeah, and speaking to that truth and that that love. Yesterday I wrote a letter to myself reminding myself why I'm doing what I'm doing. And I had a mm-hmm. beautiful realization, which was of course I want to do it for different reasons, you know, like how on a practical level I support my mom in Colombia. So, you know, that's a huge motivation for me. I want to support my family. I want to support our community. Um, I have goals and dreams, all this stuff. But deep down, I'm just doing it for me. I had this realization as I was writing the letter that regardless of what I accomplish, I'm just doing this for me because it feels true. It feels good. And, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> yeah. 
you can see that from the way you say it even like you you light up when you say that so it's, it's clear that you are you know like walking and living and breathing and speaking from your purpose you mm. know um, and our, our purpose is inter like it is intertwined with what we're doing for outside of us but also for inside of us what we're here to be regardless of who or what it's for mm -hmm. you know so it's it's a it's purpose it's your soul's purpose and um, so it's amazing that you realize that and you have been able to uh, create a life that surrounds that and make a living from that as well so you don't ever or at least for now don't ever have to mm -hmm. feel um like this is something that you do after work hours or mm. you know which a lot of people do have that um have to find that kind of balance and that can be a little difficult you know so yeah. it's it's great that you found a path of ease with mm -hmm. it i mean not that i'm not saying that it's easy i know that it's not um but a life around it basically that surrounds it fully for you to fully um, go deep and deep and deep into it without distraction. Mm. Yeah. Mm. But I'm curious to know, Juju, as a woman who has a lot of fire and has accomplished many things, um, what's your thought process like now at this stage in your life when you have an idea that you want to manifest. How is that? What goes on in Juju's head and heart? It's a very interesting question, that one specifically, because I, I am a creative. Yeah. Uh, and that is what I do um, outside of my offering in terms of uh, healing and movement mm -hmm. and meditation. Mm -hmm. uh, I am a conceptualizer, I create concepts, I am a creative director uh, yes. for many different projects as well. And it's constantly creating, constantly creating, and constantly coming up with ideas that I then brought to life which is an amazing um profession uh, i i personally enjoyed it it's very, it's, it becomes natural to, to an extent to me um how does that happen for me mm -hmm. uh, it has to be in a space mm -hmm. of flow complete flow mm -hmm. um i allow I, I i take myself there you know sometimes i'm already there and, and and that's when stuff lands you know it's completely uh, stripping any like almost um frontal lobe kind of mind thinking yeah and accessing the other parts of the brain and the way i do that is through movement mm -hmm. you know i feel like it's almost like literally as you move you start to shed and unblock and um, clear you know um energy the energy centers in the body and if you think about it in terms of you know yoga you teach yoga we have all these energy centers and then in the middle there's this snake Shishina, that just rises mm -hmm. in the back of the spine and so i think that through life those chakras from the base all the way up you start to get a little like blocked and so the snake kind of has to go like wah, 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 and that just you know sometimes mm -hmm. it gets stuck and it's like I'm, I, I, I'm trying to get up and i can't help me out girl so i feel like moving it and breathing and um music is a big thing for me you know i use that mm -hmm. a lot um allowing myself to get into that space or sometimes it's having cacao you know it's 
again, every day it's something else, all of those chakra systems are cleared and then whew, snake shoots up and this whole direct connection between what's above me, mm -hmm. the universal, universal consciousness, what's all around me and within me is united and then through there, Mm -hmm. uh, ideas and and thought is just heightened in a different way and literally stuff lands that are just I mean to me they're like I, I that's my creative process you know and whenever I've presented anything to a client or to um my boss, I do have a boss. I do have a, a job, like a nine, an actual person's job, like a, <laughs> a yeah. nine to five. <laughs> yeah. um, or to my partners, it's usually like, oh my God, where did you get that? You know, like, yeah. and, um, it's, and that's how it happens. And you know, it's so interesting. Wow. Um, and this I found out only yesterday. Like, this blew my mind. Mm -hmm. um, my grandfather moved to Qatar when he was super, when he was very, very young, right? Before then, I don't think there, anyone was here. Mm -hmm. It was at the very beginning of the jar. Yeah. That's, a, that's funny to say, but it's true. And he moved here with, with his brother and um, he was working at a bank, actually. Um, I believe it's now the commercial bank. Mm -hmm. um, and, um, he was actually like a very, very super low position. Like he was nothing at all there. Mm -hmm. um, and he started, uh, he set up his first ever business, which was a shop. And it sold fruits and vegetables and a few other produce mm -hmm. from India. Yeah. Um, yesterday, and apparently the, his supplier in India there was only one supplier. So everything he bought came from this one supplier in India. And the name of the supplier in India was Evergreen. Wow. <laughs> I, my first project in this country, yeah. like 50 years later from my grandfather, if not longer, yeah. was a you know vegan restaurant um, inspired by my travels to India and Bali. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. called evergreen organics like what are the odds and I feel like that's not a coincidence you know what I mean and at the time when I was um, incubating this project and this offering to the country I think it was literally me being in complete flow and complete alignment complete mm -hmm. attunement attunement mm -hmm. with intuition right because mm -hmm. we're all intuitive you know, people are like, what is this thing you're doing is voodoo? I'm like, it's not voodoo. You all have it, you know? You all have it. We're all connected. It's juju. <laughs> <laughs> We're all connected to it. And um, it's just about choosing to tap in. And once you do, you have this infinite, like, wealth of knowledge. Um, mm. And uh, that's that's really where it all comes from. I don't... It's not a systematic, well, I guess it kind mm -hmm. of is, right? It's about movement and music and meditation. Yeah. Um, that's really what it is. I can't say mm. much more. That's yeah. I love that. Creating from flow, creating from that space of alignment. Mm -hmm. That's something that, that I resonate with and that I try and live from, although sometimes you know i have my moments of course when i i mean we all as i said the topic gets stuck i mean yeah. uh, it gets stuck a little bit and that's for no reason mm. it just happens like it's like we slept the wrong way yeah. you know and we maybe ate something that didn't work so well whatever it could happen from anything and mm. you just our job is to just clear it out breathe it out move it out that's why we can that's why we move that's why we breathe you know, that's why there is music in the world. Mm -hmm. that's yeah. And speaking about music and movement, I'm very curious to know if there's a specific memory in you mm -hmm. as a child, perhaps, 
an early memory of you in that flow. Maybe with music, with movement. Always. Mm -hmm. Always. Um, my earliest memories of me in that flow, yeah. I, mean, I, always, I always was and always wanted to be a dancer. Yeah. Growing up as a child, that was all I wanted to do. I was a ballerina. Mm. And, like, I have pictures of me as a child. Always dance. Always. Always dance. <laughs> um, so I was a ballerina. And then I started um, belly dancing. Mm -hmm. classes, um, and then I started teaching. Even in high school, I taught movement. You mm -hmm. know, I taught that um, as an extracurricular kind of activity. Yeah. I taught belly dancing at some point, and then at some point, I was, was lots of dancing that I moved to. Yeah. With the classes, and then started teaching it at school. So it's kind of like it's always been in my DNA, you know, that movement, and then mm -hmm. sharing that and joy yeah uh, always something that i wanted to do you know like i never and for i think it, maybe the better question is there is there a time that i wasn't mm. in tune with that yeah so is, is there a time there was you know so i think as a child mm -hmm. that continued up until my kind of teenage years yeah and then you know teenage years that's when everything goes a little um and that's when it messed up a little bit from about the age of i'd say 13 oh, no 14 although i still kept dancing until 16. Uh -huh. um, but i'd say maybe later teenage so like after 16 i left doha um and i i, I was away for 10 years actually. Mm. Um, but from 16 till 21 yeah. or 20, uh -huh. that's when things went a bit haywire. But I guess I needed that as well. Yeah. I stopped dancing. I moved to um, Dubai uh, to study mm. and I went to London to study. It was my coming out of high school university days and at all, mm -hmm. I was in zero flow. However, mm. Yes. No matter what, it kept trying to manifest in one way or another. I have to mm. admit, and I think that I always tell people when I'm doing purpose coaching, mm -hmm. uh, which I do a lot of, mm. um, is that there's always an underlying thread in your life, no matter what you've gone through. No matter what phase is, we have different lifetimes in this lifetime, yeah. but there's always this one consistent thread that is there the whole time, or several. Um, and even in the times that I felt that I was completely out of flow, that was the time that I was studying psychology. Yeah. You know, so it's not the same, but I did want to understand the mind and why we do things and healing, mm -hmm. you know, I to know how I wanted to work with it because that was not the way I wanted to work with it, but it definitely complements my practice and my offering. Um, I was studying psychology. Um, I was obviously going to clubs a lot and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. I thought it was my love for you know nightlife, which was not the case. <laughs> it was not that at all. It was not yeah. that at all. It was literally just wanting to dance. Yeah. Just that, that, that. That's it. And then once I left that phase, I uh -huh. went into at the end of my degree, went into yoga. I went to naturopathic healing. Yeah. Mm. I to understand. Mm -hmm. what it is about the mind and body and movement and through that meditation that I really loved. Mm. That, that was trying to speak to me the whole time. I just wasn't aware. 
Hmm? Yeah. I wish I would have met you as a child. I think we would have danced. Sorry, I lost you for a second. I said, I wish I would have met you as a child. Oh, I was wild. I still am wild, that's for sure. A little. What was your energy like? I was f a lot more fiery than now. I think I'm still pretty fiery. Yeah. Um, but I think I'm more balanced with my water now. Mm -hmm. I'm a Pisces. Um, mm -hmm. So I'm definitely more balanced now. Mm -hmm. But I was definitely fiery. I'd say between the age, well, between the ages of 13 and 16, I was a bully. Mm. Something that I'm very ashamed of, mm -hmm. but also that I accept because I learned so much from that. What do you learn from it? I learned that I, I don't like that at all. And that, I, I mean, I'm not going to blame it on anyone or anything. I was bullied and then I became the bully. Yeah. Um, I learned that made me feel it made me feel ugly you know mm. being a boy i didn't like it i think that whatever you put out there comes back to you mm. and it, it and not only in the sense that you will get bullied if you bully but no there's a feeling an essence mm. that you project out and that essence is then embedded in yourself you know so um it was not fulfilling. It was not a life that I can relate to anymore or associate with or, but I, I'm happy that I know because I can speak from a place of knowing mm -hmm. I see something mm -hmm. or that I can um, relate to the pain of the person that is mm -hmm. being attacked in this in an instance you know and then be able to defend from really a true place of of feeling rather than authority you know yeah because that kind of like sucks when someone you're just being like an authority figure mm -hmm. you, you're not really getting your message through so that's what i learned i learned how to be able to deal with mm -hmm. that sort of things from that sort of thing from a place of feeling and rel relatability because i think it still definitely exists and not only bullying but you know, not treating people the way that they deserve to be treated for whatever reason. Yeah. Um, I've realized another, another important lesson through that, that um, if something bothers you, you don't necessarily, necessarily need to act on it in that way. I feel like there are bigger, better ways of acting. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of the time it's, it's by not acting. Yeah. You know? It's it's so much more powerful. It's kind of like, you know, you let go and let God, and then that thing mm -hmm. that that person has put out literally comes back. And I've seen it so many times mm. where I can personally, you know, maybe attacked or um, I get a lot of, I have to admit, like, I get a lot of shit still. Yeah, I can imagine. Doing what I do, and not only doing what I do, but I think um, having, and I say this in, in, in the most humble way that I possibly can, but mm. having accomplished so much here, yeah. I, I, I have gotten a lot of shit from people that have expectations. Yeah. Um, that um, maybe it comes from a beautiful place, but want to do the same thing. Mm -hmm. but I'm not I don't have ownership of anything but I mean want to do it in the, the way that it's almost like it, like bad mouthing me in the process yeah you know you don't need to do that like there's room for yeah. everybody you know what I mean yeah. uh, but in that sense I've gotten a lot of that and for me that's that's the same thing as bullying mm. you know because I've done this doesn't mean that you have the right to go out and say um, X, mm -hmm. Y, Z about me or my projects or mm -hmm. uh, anything, you know? Mm -hmm. uh, so I have been 
personally attacked in that sense recently. Mm -hmm. And I feel like every time I do absolutely nothing, like I don't even respond. Yes. Yeah. Even I, from, from the person that says it to me or I, that delivers that message to me. Yeah. You know, small, we hear everything. So I will never react. Never. Mm -hmm. And the universe does the best possible like creates the best possible outcome always always mm. you know so those are things that i've learned from that mm. quick reactive energy that i was growing up mm -hmm. well that's smart and wise <laughs> and i'm glad to know that you have that that space and that stillness within you because I know that you know the more you put out there well also the more the more shit you get uh, sometimes not all the time but um. yeah no there's I read somewhere and I love this one that like the the more light um, you have or the more light you like emit like you just become like you can either like be this thing that lights out mm -hmm. that light people or that creates life for some for people or you will also be this shiny attractive thing for like you know flies and moths and yeah. all that too yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. not that super light but mm. the more work you do you do your energy does become lighter and it definitely becomes more attractive that's yeah. for sure you know um, as an as an energy it's more attractive um, yeah. And so you get all, you attract all sorts of things. So it's your job to just kind of protect and ground and mm. stay humble and um, remind yourself and everyone that mm. there is nothing. It is nothing. It is light that belongs to the universe and is mm. there for everyone and from everyone. So you mm. Choose mm. Mm. Yeah. I agree 100%. That's something that I try and apply um, in my own life and, and work. And, and I get shared as well, people reaching out and just being, being mean. And yeah. sometimes I just, uh, well, ignore. But what I've been doing more recently is to actively spread kindness, especially mm -hmm. in, in social media by just supporting people that are in the same space and genuinely wishing well for them, genuinely wanting them to be successful, to be, you know, whatever they're working on. And um, that's a golden rule that I'm trying to, to live by and and even seeing the the hatred as as a good sign, like it's awesome. As you say, being more attractive, more expansive. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. And alchemizing that, transforming it into gold. Absolutely, that is definitely something that you can do. You can't um, like kill or destroy energy; you can only transform. Mm. Mm-hmm. And speaking about gold, do you, what are you excited about right now? As we come to the end, slowly coming to the end of this quarantine and this kind of cycle that, I mean, who knows how to transform now, but what are you excited yeah. about now? I think I'm, I'm very excited about traveling. I have to admit, like, if I'm going to be completely honest, yeah, one thing, just one thing that mm. I was okay with not doing for a while and I'm happy mm. to continue not doing it for a while, but I, mm. I, I really do love travel and I don't do it often. I definitely don't, but my like, mm. some for me is sacred. 
such a sacred time and I've been enjoying it so much here. Mm -hmm. um, but I'm very excited to just refresh in that sense and explore a new place and new waters. Like I love swimming mm. and being out, out in places surrounded by nature and just swimming in nature. Um, so I'm very, very, very excited about that. I feel like that's coming soon. Um, I'm excited about um, coming back into classes with people. Like I, I, I've been getting a lot of messages and every time I teach, I feel like, like as much as I love this phase and this season, I feel like we're not meant to be in that forever. Mm -hmm. You know, it was so vital for this amount of time. Yeah. Uh, the excitement and re emerging, and we all, everything was cycles, and that cycle is coming to an end. And I'm just excited about the new, but it is excitement. And I think it's about the beginning of a new cycle. Mm. Uh, yeah, and, and, and how different it's going to be, even though it may, may look very similar but mm -hmm. i feel like the access with a different and approach with a different energy completely from everyone i think that if i was to say what i'm excited about that no matter where it is with travel same thing yeah. it works it's like there's a new energy that we're going into everything with yeah and it's all new eyes new taste buds new like Oh, I'm getting goosebumps saying, yeah. you know, once I want something taken away from you, yeah. that's when you like, appreciate it. And for sure, we all took yeah. everything for granted. We took the travel for granted. You know, like we, there was a time I'm sure that we just bounce around for a couple of days, come back. If I leave for a holiday, like I'm the first thing I want to do is kiss the earth as soon as I land. Yeah. And I probably do do that, by the way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna bow down and kiss that ground yeah. and roll around in it for a while and say thank you for having me here. You know, like thank yeah. you for allowing me to be here. Yeah. Um, and then taking every single element mm. and then saying, that's mm. that's what I'm about. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it feels so good to see the world through those eyes yeah. of innocence and gratitude. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. What are you most grateful for in this moment? The first thing that came to my mind was life itself. So I think mm. that that's what I want to say. I'm most grateful for life itself. I'm grateful mm. for the life that I've been living. I, you know, we complain about this or that, but I love my life. So I think I'm grateful for life itself. And I think that this community really taught us to be grateful for the life that we have. Mm. Yeah. So, love you. The big quote about the song called Love Yours. Have you heard it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sorry, say again. I said there's a J. Cole song called Love Yours. Have you heard it? I haven't. I don't it's think so. One. It's a really good one. It goes like, No such thing as a life that's better than yours. No such thing as a life that's better than yours. No such thing. No such thing. It's a really good one. Nice one, I have to check it out and dance to it today. And so, looking as we move forward, Juju, beyond this cycle, moving into your future, After having done all these amazing things, accomplished, 
and planted beautiful seeds in Doha. Where do you see yourself in, say, five years? Honestly, so much changes. Mm. I'm going to go back to what I was saying in the beginning that we have no idea. Yeah, no clue. We have no clue. So I don't even say, I mean, so, I mean, naturally, I guess we all do in the back of our head think mm -hmm. somewhere in the future, what is it going to look like? Um, Honestly, like if I had to, if I could choose and I could pick, then I would be doing what I'm doing right now, which is having space for play and having mm. space for play and playing my singing bowls and playing more instruments and creating music and sharing movement and meditation and medicine, medicina. Mm -hmm. and and uh, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. oh, I never want to be as busy as I was before. Yeah, never. Like, I know mm -hmm. that there are seasons, and again, there are cycles, just like the seasons mm. and the moon and the sun. There are seasons, so I know that there might be seasons that's crunch time, and I may have to push for a bit. But I pray to God that that is short, because it makes me feel sick, you know. I mm. never want to do that. Like I'd rather um, really not make much at all, and on a practical level, mm. uh, and be me, than you know, like hustle and hurt myself for mm. a lot more because of you know, Mm. Mm. That's something I didn't realize as well. To an extent, but that's also to an extent. You know what I mean? Like there's a balance. There's a mm. there's a space, and I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunities to be comfortable in my life, um, but also. It's how comfortable the people we really need to be and how much we really need. How much we really need. That's it. Mm -hmm. mm. And the quarantine season for me was a time of evaluating that. Mm. How much do I really need? I turned my life, literally, like given away so many things, and I'm still in that, like, literally. Someone will be like, oh my God, this is beautiful. I'm like, take it, it's yours. Yeah, yeah. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Like I am trying to clear my life have as little as possible. Mm. And uh, it's making me happier, it's making me lighter. You know, yeah. Vicky was on something where he said, more money, more problems. For sure. <laughs> you know? <laughs> And not more money, more problems, more everything, more problems. More equals problems. Less equals essence. Mm. Essentialism. Mm -hmm. I think there's joy in essentialism. With overconsumption, you get a lot of other issues. More money means more, um, I don't know, um, responsibilities, but I think responsibilities can be a good thing if you're directing it right. Yeah. Um, more consumption, more mm -hmm. uh, illness, maybe mm -hmm. disease, aging, yeah. health issues, like, just, you know. Yeah. Yeah, what I hear you say is um, have less of, of meaningless stuff and have more of the essence. The word is essentialism. Mm -hmm. That's what my whole season has been about, essentialism.
And so as we wrap it up for today, Juju, if you had a spiritual megaphone and you could broadcast the message to people in, in Doha and Qatar and hack into their heads, get into their AirPods and, and share a simple message. What's your message for people in Qatar? I say I love you. Mm. There's the megaphone. Yeah. I say I love you. Yeah. I want you to take that in. I want you to feel mm. that. And I want you to share that with people. Mm. Because it just starts with one person feeling it and then sharing it. And then I'd say that. You know, where there's love, there's life. And we have to love each other. We just have to. And there's so many people out there that are in need of love. And if we could just feel it within ourselves and feel it for other people. And everything would change. Mm. You know? Yeah. So that is the message. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's powerful, Juju. I love you too. And Qatar loves you too. I love you so much. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. I Beautiful. cannot wait to see this. I have to see the rest of it. <laughs> So I think we're gonna maybe have a meeting. Mm. Uh, so yeah, we'll speak soon. Have a beautiful rest of your day. You too, you too. God bless. Take care. Perfect timing. I will see you yes. around.